Mickey Hart here. You're listening to the GAR Football Show. The GAR Hour with Colin Parkinson is brought to you by Paddy Power, home of the Money Back Special. I'm not finished yet. It took me a long time to get here. Both players have, have spoken with each other and, uh, and they regret what happened. They've had a frank discussion with each other and they're, they're both of them are keen to, to now focus on getting back to their county jerseys. But these fellas, they get such a f***ing shit shock next Saturday evening that we'll put them back in their f***ing houses for f***ing 10 years. Welcome along to the GAR. This is the football show on a Thursday. Stevie's back. Stevie, welcome back. Thanks very much. A few um, weeks off, there. We've had a few weeks off, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because we had uh, me and Conan held the fort here last uh, weekend, so we had yeah, no preview well, show. Uh, you know, I had to travel abroad for business, so. All right, okay. So we'll forgive you for that in the middle of the championship, but we'll forgive you for that. As the big news we here we have to start with is that I tore my hamstring in bits last night, and my <laughs> intermediate career is over. That's, that's sad that's not a uh, very very disappointing i could hardly sleep with the pain of this hamstring last night that's how bad it is so yeah. i'm gone you're gone the dream that, is that's over the career gone is it um i don't know well i, I was t- i had typed out an email to the gpa to release the statement okay. and say i was retired <laughs> <laughs> but i deleted it i said no i'll save it in drafts i'm gonna see i, 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 I had nobody to think but myself so. <laughs> yeah. i might have the same email to go over tomorrow um i played a game at the weekend and i Talk about maybe twenty five kickouts on my right hamstring since then. <laughs> really, has been on tender hook so. Um, because I I was so livid that last night we played intermediate championship last Sunday, and that was the first championship game I played with Portlaoise in seven years, and I got through the whole thing, no problem, delighted, and yeah. delighted with myself. And then went training last night, and my calf was in a knot, and I was constantly stretching my calf and watching my calf. And then tear my hamstring. Like I mean, it's just nonstop. At at forty years of age, it's just muscles just can't. They can't keep up. They can't. They can't do it. It's and very simple. Well, unless you're going to maybe yoga or Pilates or something. Yeah, your basis, and then sure, yeah, sure. Like the physio be telling me, go home and do that roller and all. And like, I'm not entertaining a roller. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm watching the television or something. Like, I'm not. I'm not getting down on a roller at my yeah. age. Like, so I'm not looking after myself. Number so one. So you're not that way committed to playing for Portlaoise. I'm not committed you? enough. That's. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I felt feel like with Portlaoise, right? Because I go up training and I go up training when it suits me to go up. <laughs> so on a Thursday night, it's the end of my work and week. I like a couple of bottles on a Thursday night in the house so like I mean one Thursday night there recently I had the few bottles in the house didn't go training like I like I would never like I my mind was kind of put I was thinking back of lads that dropped off playing when they're 17, 18, mm. 19, 20 and thinking this must be their attitude back then do you know what I mean yeah. they didn't really give a shit like I yeah. didn't care enough to go but I was never like that in my life you know and so like did I mean, you like it? What did I like? What the Lying bottles? Around having the bottles and not going to training. Oh, I did, yeah. And, and now after a hard week's work, if you can't have a couple of bottles, that's what I always say. That's now, the way it is. Now that the hamstring is pulled, are you going to still be part of the backroom team to help out? No, I'm very disappointed. I have to be honest. Like I mean, but again, like like I was, like Itzy said to me last night, is like I mean, how do you expect to be able to play when you're not doing? You haven't played yeah. in seven years. You're not doing weights on your legs. You're not stretching. You're not like you can't just do it. Like I mean, see, uh, here we've probably gone into this too much. Is, yeah, but if you had have gone back as goalkeeper, your hamstring wouldn't probably have pulled. Well, I was thinking last night. I was nearly inspired. I was thinking in bed before I went to sleep about what sport can I do now because I, my body just can't do this. Because mm-hmm. th- just in this year alone, I've torn my hamstring twice and my calf twice. Now they were all fairly minor enough ones, maybe three weeks, but this one we're looking at I'd be looking at six weeks I know yeah. from the pain so the season will be over but I'm thinking will I just go back and hit the gym and build my legs up and stretch and actually try to play again next year or like it's just ah, wasting yeah. your time you're just wasting your time really aren't yeah, you well, until you just get disappointed again next year uh, uh, Conan you're a wee bit younger than us but I, I'm probably going to stay around as long as the body lets me so you know I, I had, the, dis- I had the, the loss of a few years of retiring there and you do miss the dressing room you do. So I'm going to maybe hang around for a few years yet as long as the body lets me. Yeah. Well, now that you mentioned the dressing room, right, it actually segues perfectly into one of the talking points is Mike Quirk was writing a piece in the Irish Examiner and his yeah, piece is always yeah. good and we've mentioned it before. But he thinks that social media and mobile phones are ruining the dressing room dynamic, right? So he says, from my experience, it's a very different environment in today's GEA dressing rooms, certainly outside of inter-county level. A lot of guys arrive fully togged out to training and ready to go. Now, I have to hold my hands up and say, yeah. I'm one of those people. <laughs> I arrive with everything, just have just carry my boots in my hand and I get out of there after training. So yeah. that's not ideal. But I'm again, I'm 40 and, you know, I'm only playing a bit of intermediate. I would have more issues with the younger lads if yeah. they were doing that. But I don't really see evidence of that in Port Leash. But I'll continue on. Maybe they just pop their head in the door and put the car key on the shelf and throw on the boots. After training, very few take time to have a shower, opting instead to head straight to their car um, in the gear they just trained in. 
Club players are spending less time in each other's company in the dressing room before and after in tra- training and games. As a result, the tight knit bonds such as interaction can help uh, to create is being diluted and diminished. A lot of players now have far more communication through Snapchat or their WhatsApp group than they do face to face within the dressing room walls. Now, Conan, you're still very active in the club scene in Dublin, and Steve, you are at a lower level, and I am at a lower level, but we train with the seniors. Yeah. I didn't identify totally with all that stuff. I'm wondering the G. Absolutely. You, you know, do. It was something that I actually pulled a few of the players about a few weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> I was standing outside the dressing room with the team that I'm involved in, and players just walk in after training, grab their bag, out the door. And it got me thinking, this is not the way it used to be when yeah. I was playing, you know, at, at, at that type of level. You know, what is the reasons behind it? And I thought, yes, obviously, social media has, is a reason behind it. Um, but looking back when I was playing and looking back when you were playing as well, you know, there was a, a firm bond built with teams by with the, with the banter that went on in the dressing room slagging each other off you know having a bit of crack going in having a shower and and you know for that half an hour after training sessions it certainly does add to the um i suppose the team ethos as well but yeah. i have noticed it quite a bit in being back with clevy with the junior setup boys just walk in grab their bags out the door to go being involved at Bourne and I've noticed it with other teams coming and going to play Bourne as well in the last couple of years as well they just grab their bag and away to go and it's more more or less the younger generation of players the older boys in those teams are the last to leave the dressing room simply because they have the old way of, of going about things and yeah. I agree totally with Mike Quirk on this here because I have seen it and re- recognised it in the past couple of weeks and I have um, mention it to a few players yeah. believe it or not on and the you're the grumpy owl lad that's annoying these yeah. young lads now you just don't understand <laughs> these like yeah. I mean that's the way they'll be looking at you that's no, the reality well, well, of the it. reality is well, if you want a tight unit going into championship football you know getting as many of the players to stay behind and, and have a bit of banter in the dressing room certainly forms that bond yeah. and I, I basically left it to them do whatever you want about it but it's something that I've noticed it's something that I haven't been used to in all of the teams that I've played in in the yeah. past I've never seen it, you know, and it's something that has become more, more and more common over recent times. See, maybe I'm not the best person to ask about this because, like I said, I arrive with my gear on and after training, I, I get out. So I haven't really noticed how many of them do the same thing or is there that kind of crack in the showers and stuff. But, like, I mean, what's it like in Dublin, Conan, with your, with your, with your um, team? You see, I would probably be guilty of what you're talking about there, but a lot of that is just down to circumstance now. It's like when you're rushing back from Dublin to get up to Scaries, they get into the change rooms to get out so you're basically just rushing and you're looking to get back yeah. and spend time then with you know <laughs> my girlfriend who I live with like you yeah. know so you're not getting back until nine or half nine so you are just trying to get back as quickly as possible but so maybe dr- teams are suffering from all these all this kind of thing like I mean <laughs> the three I'm doing it you're doing it we have reasons for doing yeah. it Stevie's noticed it so my quirk is yeah. obviously onto something here yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think he's onto something on and, and I don't you know, know what the social media thing is about though. I don't like it's, I'm not rushing out to get onto Twitter. Like yeah, you know, I, I, no, I, but, I know that, like, but how many times do you see players actually walking into a dressing room with their head down? And simply because that's the way of going around the streets nowadays, they're walking with their head down. I've also noticed in the last four or five weeks, players walking into the dressing rooms with coffees in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Coffee <laughs> before a game, that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Well look, I mean I suppose to take the caffeine tablets, but this is the thing. I think the social media side is um, instead of having a bit of crack in the dressing room, they'll go home and put a joke on Snapchat and they'll have the laugh through and that. Instead good, of, yeah. why did you yeah. not just say that in person? Yeah. And uh, like I actually replied to somebody on Twitter recently and it's an ex-colleague of mine and she put up a tweet called, thanks very much for the taxi. It was around the snow. Mm. And she said, uh, this is the tweet, right? This is a classic. <laughs> thanks very much to the taxi driver who picked me up in the snow. He didn't have to do it. And I replied back to her and said, would it not have been better to actually have thanked the taxi driver in person? (laughs) (laughs) Number one, he might not be on Twitter. Number two, you were sitting right behind the man. You know what I mean? So like, I mean, this is the reality. People are communicating through WhatsApp and are more, and, and this is our age. Imagine the younger people who are completely used to communicating together and whatsapp group you can stick a gif in yeah. and you can have the bird a gif or whatever the hell they're called <laughs> and this is how they communicate and have the crack is it maybe losing the one one-to-one kind of is there a bit of a chicken and egg thing here though if the team had a better bond would they hang around a bit more do you know i know you're saying stevie that if if they hung around a bit more they'd have the bond but 
should you try and work on that bond a bit more and then people will hang it's around up to it. definitely it's up to the management like I mean that yeah. kind of thing people should I remember always remember and it's easier at inter-county level because you get fed after training so it's easier to get to shower hang around yeah. eat have a bit of a yeah. laugh together and in the dressing room like some great crack you'd have in the shower after a really hard training session because you're just so relieved it's all over and then the crack can start it yeah. has been serious yeah. and I was only the intermediate match we played at the weekend was only was in Port Harrington and that's where we used to train with Mick O'Dwyer and do all the hard training sessions and Mickey Nolan who would have been uh, Fergal Byron's understudy on those matches we were in the dressing room in the showers in Port Harrington and we started reminiscing about the crack we had in the, dress, in the showers after some of those nightmare sessions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. That's important. It is important. All that stuff is important. It's memories, it's bonds. If me and him are talking about it and I'm 40, all this was a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Right, Super 8s, we want to talk about this, lads, because uh, Galway and Dublin obviously are through. Um, Kildare and Roscommon are obviously out, right? So Monaghan, Kerry, Donegal, Tyrone all have something to fight for this weekend. So there's a weird scenario that could happen uh, this weekend, right? So we're expecting Kerry to beat uh, Kildare, and that's that sorted, right? So what we're wondering about is what kind of a team Galway will put out against Monaghan because they're already through, and there's such a short turnaround to a semi-final. Yeah. Like, I mean, are they through? Keen Ward um, is of the opinion that they say they're already through and they give their panel a run, and that's it, because... They, if they lost Comer, or Shane Walsh if they lost any of them they're in big trouble six days yeah. later like that's the way he takes on it I'm not sure what they'll do to be honest Maliki Clerken has been talking about Galway saying they have to top the group to avoid Dublin so we're expecting their full team um, so like we, we don't really know but there is one weird one that can happen this weekend and that is because Kerry and Monaghan have very close scoring differences I think uh, Monaghan or Kerry are minus two and Monaghan are plus three. So if Kerry beat Kildare by two, and Monaghan lose by three, and Monaghan score a goal, right? Then Kerry and Monaghan will have drawn, they'll have the same points, they'll have the same score difference, and they'll have the same, the same goal scored. So there's a replay. Is it a replay? Yeah, it's a playoff. It? Well, it's and a playoff. Six days to fit it in. So you have, might have to go to Wednesday night. <laughs> right. They might have to go to Wednesday night now. Like, I didn't know that. It's not beyond the bounds of possibility yeah. for Kerry to win say like it I, doesn't matter by three points yeah. with no goal scored yeah. and then for Galway to beat Monaghan uh, Monaghan score a goal Mon they have to beat Monaghan by two which would completely open up that, considering that, that certainly adds to the excitement of the Super <laughs> considering, <laughs> considering the the year the GA has yeah. had me and Conan were talking about the year they've had mm -hmm. they've had a bloody nightmare it started off with the All Ireland club and the Corrafin player Malloy having to go from Sigerson to All Ireland right, semi final. Yeah. Or no, it started off with actually all the the January competitions getting snowed off and having to play some of them having to play their finals during the league. Then the league getting snowed off and having to actually cancel league games. Yeah. Then the April for clubs was just turned into a farce. Then we started into the <laughs> we started into the championship and how much shit has happened and gone wrong in the champ. It's been the year from hell from an administrative point of view from the GA as far as I'm concerned and wouldn't this be the kind of icing on the cake <laughs> for this to go to a playoff and kind of you know mess up to se having to move to semi-finals and then not having the same lead into the final but uh, we'll have to wait and see we'll have to wait and see what happens with it I but think it's sort of exactly what everybody would want as well because there is that little bit of emboldenment around you know the GA community now where they're sort of waiting to points on every yeah. mistake that, like, there's ah, a revolution yeah, going there's on there's a revolution like, you know. going on there's nearly always been that people are very comfortable taking pot shots on them but then the Lee Miller thing there's just been so much this summer to have pot shots at them like I mean this won't be their fault but then again I don't think enough thought was put into the whole Super 8 season anyways and I think that's probably one of the reasons yeah. like I mean in the hurling it's absolutely outrageous I'll be talking about this in the hurling show and I'll earn semi-final between Clare and Galway is being played in Turles. So 6,000 people less than went to Croke Park won't be able to go to an All-Ireland yeah, semi-final semi yeah. because Dublin have Roscommon in Croke Park in a dead rubber. Like, that's just wrong. Like, I mean, how can you stand over that decision? Like, I mean, this is an All-Ireland semi-final yeah. versus a dead rubber. And it shouldn't even be Dublin's home bloody... Ve it's not even Dublin's home venue, you know, without getting into all that again. <laughs> I want to get into Mickey Hart quickly, as We had a good laugh about this. Mickey Hart saying that the pitch wasn't narrowed for Dublin. It was narrowed for Sky and then Sky came out and said wait a minute Mickey it definitely wasn't us because we never requested anything of the sort we don't need an yeah. extra space for our cameras so Mickey Hart had a media day on Tuesday morning there and he was asked about this and he said well 
Um, he says, I think that was well spoken about in the days and weeks after the match, and I don't think we need to talk about it again. That's finished. I'm not talking about it anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. like, Mickey. And did Muggsy come out and say something? Yes, about I have Muggsy's one here yeah. now, which is another one. Muggsy's brought it on a little bit, so we'll move off to Mickey Hart one because Muggsy has said, and this is, I, this is just whispers around Tyrone. Uh, like, there's, well yeah. there's nothing to this. Like, I mean, Muggsy says, the game is huge for Tyrone, absolutely massive. The whispers doing the rounds in the county are that Oma's pitch wasn't narrowed for the dubs, but it was narrowed to reflect the size of Bally Buffet's pitch. That will tell you how big this game is. It's going to be tight. Bally Buffet is an easy place to go. It'll be hostile. That's nonsense. That's just supporter yeah. talk. Yeah, That's yeah. not there. You don't look ahead of it. I wouldn't it. think so. I wouldn't think Mickey Hart would have been looking that far ahead either. You know, no. he would have been sending his team out to beat Dublin, yeah. even though not too many teams can beat Dublin at the minute. But he would have been sending his team out with the best possible advantage of, of trying to beat Dublin. Um, watching the game, it, obviously the, the side of the stand, the pitch definitely wasn't narrowed. Oh, so it was. It was the side of the stand it looked very close to uh, the, the stand yeah, no, and, it's and all the sideline so it, it was only narrowed slightly that side but it was pr- I, I presumed that it was the side where the cameras were that uh, most of the narrow and top players yeah but Stevie you have to understand you, you can't narrow one side or else <laughs> how would you you'd have to move the goals no I, I understand that, <laughs> but that, I'm only saying looking at it from the TV point of view it definitely didn't look to be narrowed that much yeah no it didn't you're trying to wriggle out of that fairly well now, but <laughs> no but it mean, didn't it certainly didn't but you understand the stupidity of what you, what you just said <laughs> don't be hanging, hanging out the dry here now. <laughs> we'll move off that we'll move off that but you're quickly. here it's not a big deal to move post as well if you're moving the pitch you're not a big deal to move posts but then you'd have to move all the lines on the field ah, as well you, <laughs> when you would you have a small square in front of the goals come on don't try to fight your way out of Stevie because there's no way out for you you just have, you just have to accept it I'm like, going to get you back <laughs> alright so Tony McEntee your buddy Stevie and your ex-teammate he's left Mayo so like there's been a total clear out of the Mayo yeah. management we've spoken about um, Donny Buckley leaving selector Peter Burke has, is expected to step down so we've only got one fella staying one selector staying and McEntee who obviously McEntee and Donny Buckley were huge in that setup. Yeah. Like I mean they were like I'm surprised Rochford staying on with the whole backroom team after having left I think you'd have to change the backroom team for him to stay on do you think I, so and yeah. he's definitely fresh everything needs to be freshened up I don't think he could stay on without all these new fresh voices yeah, so okay. I think this is the only way he could go forward in my opinion, and like we've all been in changing rooms, and you get sick of hearing the same thing over. No matter how good the manager is, yeah. you just need something new. And suddenly, when you get a new guy in, you're trying to impress him as well oh, a yeah. bit more, you know. So I think this is the best way for Rochford to go. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, and Tony McIntyre, you know, the, I suppose the commute to go to Mayo, you know, three years running was probably a tough. Um, a tough thing for him to do, particularly with a young family. I know he done a lot of his training session training sessions down around Dublin probably in the winter times but it's still a, you know you're heading you know four or five hours almost every time uh, one way so it's definitely a, a tough journey to make um, he was always going to stand down this year I think particularly the way the season ended up for Mayo but Tony's a man in demand so he is you know he's, he's, he's well thought of in terms of his coaching ability he's well thought of in terms of his managing ability and he's a <clears throat> you know Tony says it as he, he sees it and there's a lot of neighbouring counties now without a ma- manager around Down Armagh. maybe there. Y- you're looking at Down. Would he take the, on Down now? Would he, knowing the rivalry there, would well, he clear? Well, I, I know he was in for it the last time. Was and, he? Um, you know, they opted against him for one reason or another, I'm not too sure. Louth is another neighbouring county that's looking for a manager. Cavan are another neighbouring county that's looking for a na- manager. So there's, there's options there for Tony, and I'm sure if those county boards have any sense, they'll be knocking on Tony's door to at least interview him. Yeah, no, definitely. So maybe to- Tony has served his apprentice ship well now yeah. and he's ready for he's ready for the big job he's he didn't go well in dublin club football that's one kind of uh who did he have there some bridges, bridges. bridges. Yeah. yeah they didn't do well but they were up on the slide big time i think when he when he took them over and mm-hmm. Like St. Bridget's are only a shadow of the team now. To- or I think it's an Andy McEntee. Yeah, but he, if Jerry you t- McEntee's over them again now, and I don't think he's doing too well. He's not doing too well with them. If you speak sure. to the Cross McGlam players when he had had them, I know he's with Gareth O'Neill, but he revolutionised how they played football. You know, he, he really put a stamp on it in terms of kicking the ball more so and, and playing a more direct brand of yeah. football and, and players breaking from the defence and supporting their attack. And that was something that he implemented. And it's a style that, you know, attract is very easy on the eye as well and yeah. a lot of counties would probably take note of that as well and and you know want somebody like that there over the over well, the Kieran McGinney want them 
What's that? Kieran McGinney wanted them in with Arma. See, the thing Kieran, is, with Kieran's Kieran, nearly had every one of his yeah, ex-teammates no. as a vice yeah, manager no, at this But the thing is, with Kieran and, and Tony, I think Tony's, as, as you said, there he has served his apprenticeship now at inter county level, and I think he's ready now to make the step up to to management mm-hmm. level. And maybe he, he's a smart lad, Tony, as well, and maybe he's seen the Mayo opportunity as a, as a chance to go in and learn more about the inter county scene in terms of of being a member of a backroom team and not as much pressure put on his shoulders at that stage but definitely I think he's ready for the step up now yeah okay maybe we'll see that Paul Conroy's been in the media there lads during the week and he's been talking about his injury so he broke uh, two bones in his legs a double fracture so he fractured his tibia and fracture of his fibula on his left leg like I mean how he did it was himself and Sean O'Shea slid in for a ball and Sean O'Shea's knees collided with his shin I've never heard of a, a leg being broken in such yeah. an innocuous way. Have you guys? Like, I mean, I never thought that a sliding together would be that yeah. big an impact to how, break your how shin did, bone. Um, how did Bino McDonald break his that time? Bino's the most bizarre break. Bino's just got his studs. I, d- I don't think there was even uh, contact. The ground, from planted in the ground, was some it? some way. Like, he snapped his leg in half. Yeah. It was the most bizarre break I've ever seen yeah. Bino's one. Because there was no... Uh, maybe there was a tangling of legs slightly as they were running. But, like, again, nothing... That yeah. you would think would be snapping of shin bone in yeah. half, like I mean, and that's what happened, Bino. It's, but this one with Conroy was weird because his leg was on the ground. Did yeah, they slid in yeah. together. Yeah, so saw like, Parsons like in his leg. Uh, there's a bit of leeway. Ah, you could see that yeah. the whole weight went onto him. Yeah, but like but the this weight's one, off his leg. Yeah, and, and I've often slid into lads on the ground. Yeah, but like, the force. I mean, it was a bad day as well, and the force mm. of, of the wet conditions would would drive you know yeah. the player in probably at a faster pace as well, and yeah. definitely a, a horrific injury, right. but. Um, something that take a while to get over. I remember Kevin Walsh going mad at the time, but I, I was sort of thinking, geez, that's a that's a carry free, you know, because it did look so. I was there to be one. Yeah, yeah. they both slid in. Listen, he, he didn't get the top of the shoe though. It was yeah. Col- Colin Parkinson's Well, that's injury. it. That's what I was just <laughs> going to say. So, like all the kind of you know big players in the game have to deal with this disappointment, <laughs> and me and Paul, you know, we're just going to have to you know get over it, and we're just going to have to come back stronger next year <laughs> at completely different levels. Yeah. So, like I mean, me and Paul have just a lot a lot in common at the moment. Go you for know? <laughs> right, we'll be back and we'll talk about the matches. So it's been difficult to know which games to cover in these Super 8s since they've started, but it's very, very easy this weekend. So we've got the two games that there's something riding on, which is Donegal Tyrone in Ballybuffet and Galway Monaghan in Salt Hill. So we'll start with Donegal and Tyrone because this is a huge rivalry. It's a bit of a toxic rivalry historically. These teams don't like each other. Now, again, there's a lot of new faces on these teams and whether that kind of toxic um, rivalry is still there will be interesting to see. But I saw Brian McAniff, he was writing in the Donegal Democrat, and he says it's great to have the game at home. Ma- what is it? What's the name of the pitch? Bally Yeah, oh, but what's the name McCool of the pitch? McCool Park. Uh, McCool, McCool Park. Park yeah. Okay, it's here. McCool Park is worth three or four points to us. Three or four points. They think uh, that Bally Buffet is worth to them. Sean Kavanagh was talking this week, and he says Tyrone have the artillery to stop, Dub- or to stop Donegal. Whether they have enough up front and in Bally Buffet is another matter. Well, he was on 2FM on Game On, and he says... If the game was anywhere else outside of Bally Buffet, I would say I would say Tyrone would win by three or four points. But it's such a tough place to go. Yeah. Three or four points. Kavanagh mm-hmm. and Brian McAniff are giving Bally Buffet. Yeah. Um, Should then Donegal are bankers because I have this as a 50-50 game, <laughs> and we're never giving them three or four points. It's a tough place to go. Absolutely. <laughs> we went up there in two thousand and seven, probably with a better team. We'll win for most of the match, and, and they got to go in the last minute to beat us. So, you know. They play above and beyond when they're at home, so they do Donegal. And, you know, they have a great record there in recent times. And teams going into that, Throne will go into to McCool Park and, and Bally Buffet knowing that, you know, the odds are stacked against them in terms of the quality of the team that they're playing against. It's an exceptionally good Donegal squad, not just the, the first 15, exceptionally good squad, but also the fact that they have an exceptionally good record playing there. and they will be um, well up for it and well pumped particularly given the fact of the importance of the game as well yeah the big talking point here is like Michael Murphy and he played so well at full forward the last day now there's a couple of ways of looking at this that Declan Bonner says that they wait and see how midfield is going and when they can when they realise that they've, they're breaking even or winning midfield then they can afford to leave him in now Donegal will break even in midfield because Tyrone's midfield will be midfield minus Colin Kavanagh who'll have gone yeah. into full forward so does Michael Murphy full follow back, him yeah. in like I mean that's the, for me that's the perfect tactic for Michael Murphy to mark Colin Kavanagh and whenever Colin Kavanagh drops 
Michael Murphy follows him on in there. Yeah. Is that not the like where based on what Kevin Bonner or Declan Bonner has said that if Colin Cavan is not out around dominating midfield, he'd only be there for kickouts. You don't have to worry about that midfield dominance. You know, you just tell Murphy to play full forward when Colin Cavan is full back and play a midfield when Colin Cavan comes yeah. out midfield. Is it not the perfect opportunity for something I've been banging on for I don't know how long? Is stop yeah. giving Colin Cavan a free role in there, follow him in. This is made for this tactic. You would you would expect that will be the case, but didn't it happen a few years ago where it ke- became a, a pulling and dragging match between the two players? Colin Cavan had just spent the whole seventy minutes pulling and dragging Michael Murphy around the field and got away with it. So right, was that know, Justin Justin uh, McMahon? Maybe no, was it? No, I thought it was Colin Cavanagh, wasn't it? it it's, it's t- is it not tough though to occupy Colin Cavanagh? Like you know what, what I assume is that Hamsey will go on to Michael Murphy because he did such a good job last year well you see Ham, well Hamsey might be stuck to go back into the defense. oh he might man Mark Murphy yeah but he'll come back in with him yeah. and it leaves Colin Cavan a free no matter what like they want to keep him free then you have Michael Langan let him in like I mean he has to be occupied you know like yeah. I mean there's two like, you obviously have a Tyrone will have a move for Donegal's move mm. but then can you not have a move like you have to yeah. you look at the way Fenton Mark Colin Cavan Cavan was taken off now obviously Cavan was taken off after 64 minutes for McClure when Tyrone of course went for it which I'm <laughs> massively critical about that they had to wait until 64 minutes Mickey Hart quoted after the game saying we, we just said we'd go for it then uh, it's just bizarre to me but anyways uh, Fenton made Kavanaugh look a little bit silly in that Fenton was always inside the 45 he was tying moves mm-hmm. together he, like he wasn't necessarily being marked because Kavanaugh just sprinted off him sprinted off Brian Fenton which I thought was a weird tactic now obviously there's other fellas dropping back but Fen- Fenton was always kind of on that attacking side available yeah. and giving him off whereas I don't know I just think that it's been too easy for Tyrone for too long with this Yeah well Colin Kavanagh is one of the best sweepers in the game he, he plays it really really well for, for Tyrone so he does but I would agree with you push a man up see what, what, what their plan B is see if the have somebody else that maybe sweep in front of a Michael Murphy who's playing playing further up the field then but definitely for Donegal to get the upper hand <clears throat> they need to get Michael Murphy on under the ball as much as possible and he will control things he generally does control things uh, extremely well for them so I Michael Murphy's best position for me is closer to the full forward line because he but just not against Tyrone though should he against Tyrone would it against Tyrone if he, he's following he's such a big powerful man any yeah. type of ball you know he can win that's the thing you know it's it's not a case of um, putting your, your best player in there and isolating them Michael Murphy is one of the most powerful players in the country and it takes an extremely powerful player or, or double act to yeah. try to stop him could, so two, so could be two or three players but see yeah. this, this is the thing right so we know we talked about a little bit before that a lot of these teams now are pushing so f- when Tyrone have the, the 13 bodies inside the 45 the opposition's team might be sending 10, 11, 12 up there and they're trying to occupy yeah. all these zonal players so that it's almost like a one everybody's got a man but it's just in half you know what I mean in less than half the pitch in that scenario Michael Murphy pushing up and Colin Cavanagh Colin Cavanagh has to engage with him has to mark him yeah. because everyone else kind of has a man do you know what I mean is that kind of level that you're going to get to I always wonder Colin Cavanagh to say is a brilliant sweeper you never see him intercepting ball he's often behind he's there to prevent goals and Mickey Hart has said that he's often behind his full back line have you, uh, have you ever seen like you, I, 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 I do think he does see, him, ag- see him against see him against uh, see him against Dublin when James McCarthy's running at him he doesn't even come out and hit him yeah. like I mean sometimes if you can if you can match up around all those but balls but Dublin aren't stupid enough to kick the ball down his, his throat normally like, he, but he is <coughs> so good at stopping goals I think like, normally that McCarthy he's thing, always he's there the nails him. The, yeah he'll come in on a tackle I've often yeah. seen him doubling up on a tackle but you don't see him intercepting kick passes maybe because teams yeah. don't kick pass he's always there so say you're taking on your man Kevin is good at drifting over there and when you look up you might be kind of think right well I might have him you see Kevin there you turn back around but is that he's not there in fact tur- the role of a sweeper yeah, is he's covering he's that space he's and the, then yeah, filtering across he's, he's there at turning people yeah, off yeah. going in there yeah. but I think you need to take that away from Tyrone I'd never see any teams taking that I, away from Tyrone how he's doing it for five years now how has no team ever ever followed him in there and I, put that on him I remember like uh, last year it. in Clunas Rory Gallagher tried something where there were four full forwards for Donegal they were trying to sort of overdo oh, it oh yeah yeah but their own kept bringing these men it sort of suited them better because it packed it out even more and then yeah but that's all Donegal Gallagher's a very conservative manager whereas that was a good tactic he left Tyrone too many lads in yeah. front of them you know yeah. but nowadays 
teams are given more to the attack. You know, they're less conservative in that, and that's how you break it down. And Donegal are, in fairness, more patient now yeah. with Bonner. They yeah, don't, exactly. They won't they won't fall into that trap. They might have loads of men forward, but they'll wait for the opening. But like and like Cavan, I think is one of the best sort of goal stoppers because if you ever see anybody turning into him, they, yeah, they he's don't extremely get out strong in attacking. Yeah, yeah. I guess a couple of times against Monaghan, I think it was Darren Hughes. Like they turn in and Darren Hughes, but big, just big bang, man, it yeah. stops because because he's there. It's, you're right. Like you do, you have to try and occupy him, and I think Murphy is the best way to do it. I still think Murphy will end up having Kavanaugh and Hampsey. Yeah. Then on top of him and but then send someone in I'm telling yeah. you that's right because there's a double bluff on this and you're right so when Ken Murphy goes in after Kavanagh Hamps will follow him in mark him Kavanagh is free send Langan in then send o- Odra McNeilich in send yeah. enough lads in like and then throwing s- suddenly then Kavanagh is going you get him you get him and they're throwing up like I mean yeah. Kavanagh is then trying to orchestrate everyone to get himself free but there's too many bodies in around and, and it doesn't always Kav- have to be probably a big Brute of a player that has to go yeah. in the other. A Ram McHugh are going to be very, Just very enough effective lads, on him as well. Just enough lads buzzing around him yeah. to go. And you can guarantee you, Kevin is going to orchestrate to get make sure he's not marking him. Yeah. But that throw is thrown off. Do you know what I mean? He, mm. Kevin is then is trying to take a man out of his zone because you know players are going back and they're occupying areas on the field. <laughs> Kevin is pulling one of them out of there saying you mm. may get him I'm meant to be free and there's a lot of kind of mis- you know kind of arguing yeah. arguing amongst themselves but I for, for the life of me every time Tyrone loses the ball and here's an example Tyrone are pushing up on kickouts now whenever they can right so they're all pushed up on a kick out man on man the minute that ball is not initially won by Tyrone Colin Kavanagh sprints back the wrong way. Yeah. So they don't ever give themselves a chance. Right, well, we might have lost the kick out, maybe but we can still turn it yeah. over up here. No, They're, the minute that kick out's not won, it's like, well, plan B, get back. Yeah. And Kavanagh sprint. Plan, plan sorry, plan A. Plan B maybe on the yeah. kick out. So you, if you win your kick out against Tyrone, they'll automatically then nearly give it to you until you get back there. So mm-hmm. I, sometimes I wonder, like, I mean, I don't know about them even bothering at all, Tyrone. But when Kavanagh sprints back right he's the one that gets back there before everyone else the rest of them in fairness will be drifting back and drifting back so you can move it on so at that point where Kavanagh's sprinting back that's when I want to see a player sprinting with him do you know what I mean because instead then when you look up you see Kavanagh standing in front of a full forward line the kick isn't really on but if you sprint back with him now I know Kavanagh will ship you off and whatever if you sprint back with Kavanagh then maybe that kick mm. pass is on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just hard, like because he's he's not really going back himself. Like the rest of them are, they're not going to leave <laughs> themselves so open that there'll be a free man just to pop it over. Like the rest of them do filter back then. They do. Will. Burns will yeah. filter back a bit, bit before everybody else. But I I I wonder does it get this tactical to say these lads? This is we've seen this on a video. This mm. is Tyrone's tactics. Burns and Kavanagh are the first two to get back. You're on Burns. You're on Kavanagh. You're manning up on them. We're not going to give them them two first men back. Would that not be something Donegal would talk about and say, well, you're, after the kick out, if we win the kick out, you're following Burns, you're following Kevin it down at that fence. Then we might have yeah. one-on-ones in there. Would that would that be spoken about? Like, that seems logical to me, but I'm, I don't, I've yeah, seen Kevin run back there so many times and you're crying out for someone mm, to follow. Is this weekend the game for it though? You know, there's extremely high pressure on both managers going into this game and do they want to leave themselves open? Like if Donegal but Donegal them. have the ball you see so uh, you're I not leaving this is not I even a, this is that, not even a but Tron uh, can overturn them just as good and break at speed so they can so do they want to leave themselves isolated as well without having that cover with thrown on the counter attack and that, that's that's the the concern that um, Bonner would have as well yeah maybe teams don't do it because they like to have the extra man or two out the field yeah. to work it up the field but my point is, Toronto aren't that intense in trying to turn it over. They're drifting back. They're, yeah. they're not really they're actively. Gonna get up the field, you're going to get up the field, yeah. even yeah. if you're down to two men, because Toronto aren't trying to kill you by yeah. getting the, the ball back. The thing with Donegal is, if, if they are patient and work the ball up to the 45 anyway, they've got players with, with great kicking ability, Michael Murphy, Oder, McNeilish, that consistently put the ball over from 45 yards anyway. And it's a case of trying to get those good kickers on the ball from that distance. And that would be interesting to see if they got a few long range points early on. Would it entice? the throwing the fence out a wee bit further on them and and 
you know create more openings for yeah. for yeah. all the well, no, it, well it is interesting you said that like i mean and we've talked about that definitely but hugh mcfadden said after the roscommon game he said we got our shooters and top players on the ball inside the 45 and we started taking some smart scores yeah. that's clearly the obvious Absolutely, tactic yeah. in once you're inside the 45 let's get a mcneilish thompson murphy any of these long range uh, point kickers and like that's obviously when you're at a stalemate situation you yeah. try to work them in there's two different ways obviously but that's of an intelligent way of playing and, and Donny Gall are intelligent enough to know when to get the right boys on the, on the ball in a certain area of the field yeah no it is so who's a bigger loss Van Gallagher and Mark Brearty versus Ronan McNamee and Cottle McCarran so they're all actually very important players like very, I would say arguably Donny Gall a bit more say, important I would say Donny Gall's uh, players are more important um, because but McNamee and McCarran, they're two of your first choice full back line gone. Offset by McBurty being gone yeah. though. It's, you know, yeah, well that's true. Yeah. It's often exactly. And, and, and McBurty was scoring heavily for Donegal before he got injured. But Van Gallagher breaking up from from the fence, you know, creating opportunities. He's a he's a serious weapon there. So he was yeah. and he's going to be a huge loss. So do Tyrone have decisions to make now because obviously Cottle McCarran and McNamee are gone this time. So like I mean, what what's the rejig they're going to do here? So like I mean, McNamee is such a big player; they need to find a full back. Who's the full back going to be? Like, I mean, they can get put one of the cornerbacks in full back and they need a cornerback. Do you know, does Hamsey have to go back centre half back then, Conan? You see, do you know, th- like, does Hamsey c- have to yeah. come out of midfield? Or, like, I mean, it, it's difficult It's difficult to know. Like, I mean, um, it was Kieran McGeary came on. He can play a wing back. He scored two points yeah, the last McShane, day. He was really can also play a wing back as well. I think he played a few years of wing back for, for the under 21s, did he? Right. No, I don't think. Myler did. Myler, M- McShane played midfield when midfield. they won the under 21 at Ireland, yeah. Maybe, uh, was it the college then? Uh, he might have played wing half back. But Throne They're are all one playing the, wing half back. Yeah, yeah. pretty much <laughs> all. one of the teams that have versatility in terms of they can adopt players from playing in a wing half forward position back to half back anyway so I, I think that'll come natural to them yeah so Ryan McHugh has been tagged in all the games so far this year he's been yeah. very unlucky like I mean he's just so good who does Tyrone tag him with I suppose it is Connor Myler is it is that who's going to have to follow him everywhere was it Peter Hurt last year that, that they sort of went up against each other um, in Clunas it could have been yeah well, it was it was yeah. and uh, actually McHugh got three points McHugh in the first took half. him to the cleaners yeah. in the first half yeah um, Hurt came back in the second and that was good to see but Jesus if you're a manager do you really want do you want Peter Hurt following Ryan McHugh and do you want Ryan yeah. McHugh following Peter Hurt there's I know it's good because they're probably the best people to no, follow. No, I, d- I think Toronto are, make, Toronto are making a mistake if they put Peter Hart no, on I, I, I There's only one Myler winner on there. So I definitely put Myler on him because Peter Hart is so influential for Toronto. Is he though? I don't think Peter Hart's he's having... He's not, but he's not having a good season. Like He's having a very poor championship, Peter Hart. Like, I, mean, uh, he, no, I, I think a lot of the work that Peter Hart goes through goes unnoticed. You know, a lot of his <sighs> link play... He's an intelligent player. He always sees... I saw him against sees, Dublin. I saw him against Dublin, Stevie. Yeah. He wasn't impressive that day. Now... Oh, can you count all those kind of turkey shoots he wasn't good against Monaghan like I mean we're talking about running up 1-4 against Cork when you're scoring 320 yeah. that doesn't impress me like what impresses me is doing it against Monaghan or Dublin in a game you have to do it and he didn't do it either day now that's two big championship games he has not done it in and like maybe he's been like he was man marked obviously against yeah. Dublin which is not easy playing that middle third with a follow, follow, fella following your every mm-hmm. run Sludden who's a brilliant player and he does it consistently does it he was man marked and he found it really difficult so Dublin went in and they tagged Peter Hart they tagged Niall Sludden and James McCarthy on Maddie Donnelly boom 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 and this is why I love Dublin yeah. is that they always get this stuff right they'll close you down and they have the players to do it just wondering who Owen Van Gallagher you'd imagine would have been right for, for Niall Sludden he's not there you wonder who's going to tag these fellas or do will Donegal even bother tagging them because let's be honest Peter Hart Maddie Donnelly Niall Sludden you're shutting them down. That's their whole attacking yeah, yeah. kind of uh, outside link. of Tiernan yeah. McCann. That's their they're the four most important attacking players for Tyrone is Donnelly, Hart, Sludden, and McCann. Yeah. And then maybe Mark Bradley might come into it. He'd be important too. But like I mean, they are they are the lads. And Dublin identified that even though they were favourites and yeah. didn't care about losing their own players to take these lads out of the game, yeah. and they did. And and they did take them out. I think five five of their six five of Thrones four six scores came from defenders so you know um, obviously Dublin re- realised that where the threat came from and, and tried to stop that um, but it's 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 a hard one to call I, I, I would disagree with you in terms of Peter Hart I think he's a super player I think he, no I'm not saying he's not a super no, player I, I there I, you are, are no, again <laughs> but I know what you're saying that he hasn't performed in the big games this year for him I think he performs more times than what he doesn't perform in terms of, of being one of the key players for Throne and 
this might be the, the type of game that will you know um, get him going I, I would actually say that he was he, play, he played a smart enough game against Dublin I think he's one of the players that actually can see things um, differently than other players he was cleaned out of it Steve he was at the game he got yeah. an early point but he didn't feel the weight of the ball he didn't feel the weight of the ball in that game like yeah, he didn't. He wasn't I mean, in it. Listen, I I would disagree to an extent. I think I still think he's he's very important player for Tron and has been a very important important player this year in this campaign as well. Probably hasn't uh, lived up to the expectations in the Dublin match and the Monaghan match in comparison to what we have become accustomed to with Peter Hart. But definitely, he has been a key player for them. Yeah, th- there's like he he does things are in the middle. I know you know he's a good player and stuff, but. I, Start some of the stuff that does go unnoticed where he might just take out one player and sometimes when you do that it opens everything up and he's not getting an assist or a score but just that little turn of shoulder or like turn of pace or a fake pass or a pass that nobody sees yeah. and it just opens things up for Tyrone as a whole you know and he's still doing that I agree he's not he's definitely not having his best season what I would say is that Dublin had John Small to come on to him. They had Merchant to go on to Sudden. Yeah. Yeah. And they had James McCarthy, who was a bit of a loss if you want to man mark him on Donnelly. But they had boys that they didn't need to worry about losing out of the game. Just they man mark these players. Do you know? Whereas yeah. Donegal, their best players might have to go on them. Like, did they sacrifice Ryan McHugh to, to keep an eye on this boy? Whereas those Dublin lads could just focus on Peter Hart and yeah Madison. well the two defenders yeah McCarthy gave sure McCarthy scored the goal he gave Donnelly he beat Donnelly in yeah. a let's go at each yeah. other type yeah. uh, type thing it's hard to know who's going to who's going to take them on like I mean you'd imagine Mark Bradley like I said Jamie Brennan is an important player for Donegal in that he's that focal point for when they want to break using a kick pass now Jamie Brennan his issue is that he's not a natural finisher yeah. he's a finisher a bit like I was like he's going to let you down with an easy chance he's not that lethal forward and that's where McBrearty's loss comes into it because Brennan is a brilliant foil for a lethal finisher but yeah. he's not that lethal finisher and it's almost unfair the goal against Dublin you know the misses that he that he can miss points as well easier ones mm-hmm. but he can kick spectacular ones but like that's not what yeah, you want that's not your bread there. it's not there It's yeah. not, and it, but it's unfair maybe to ask him to do that because he's more of a foil he's not that fin- mm-hmm. he's not that lethal finisher yeah. and fellas like him that are so such good movement and such good ball winners very rare you find that they're good finishers as well yeah and suddenly he's not just asked to score those <coughs> sorry those goals against um, in the last game but he's expected to do it against Dublin like he's, there's nobody else there to do it maybe that's yeah. why Murphy Going into full forward makes it even makes even more sense because yeah. it sort well, of frees t- him up a we bit. We said more. that before the Dublin game that we couldn't that with McBrearty out. Yeah, you'd imagine Brennan will be the foil for Murphy, and yeah. no, they, whether they want to do it or not, they've really no choice yeah. now. And then Murphy doesn't go in yeah. there at all against Dublin, and then he does against Ross Common, and you'd I'm imagine. Right. Jesus yeah. lads go in after having a send Murphy and just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see yeah. a team doing it. Like yeah. I mean, you're at home, send a team in and do it. And the the, the worry I would have even though the game is evolving away from really defensive uh, game plans, is that these two teams, they know each other so well, the temptation for them will be to fall back into a Jim McGuinness versus Mickey Hart or Rory, Gall- or Rory Gallagher versus Mickey Hart yeah. clonus Ulster final. Do you know, there is, there is that kind of worry from a spectator point of view that they'll just go back to, to the, the conservative kind of fear yeah. of being hit in the break will just make them just go completely crazy. Yeah, it could be in terms of scoring, it could be a very low scoring affair, but it, it, it'll certainly be an intense game. There'll, oh. be, there'll be intensity to it that we haven't probably seen from an Ulster matchup this year uh, to date because of, of the importance of it. But um, it's it's going to be a cagey affair. There's no doubt there, both teams aren't going to go out and, and leave themselves isolated and open uh, for, for their opponents to counter attack. It's going to be a cagey affair. It's going to be, you know, uh, who can who can manage the game as best as possible and and that's where i suppose the the experience of donegal is going to come into effect the experience of michael murphy McLoon, um you know likes of um in, in the fence uh mclean players who got there very very important to get the, those type of players on the ball to, to play with the calmness and the patience and i think that that's going to happen yeah mclean's having a great season right les we, we've done enough on that one galway monaghan like that's actually the first all Ulster Super 8 is it like I mean and so much riding on it so like this will have a different feel it's not Ulster Championship yeah. anymore it's in Ulster well, it's a lot Two cheaper Ulster than the Ulster Championship as well it's is 20 it? quid almost 20 half quid, the price yeah. Yeah. fairy tale stuff um, right Galway Monaghan as there's a real novelty kind of factor about this right so it's 80 years since these teams have played each other and they've only played once 
um, in the championship 1938 All Ireland semi final where Galway won. So there's a good thing about the Super Eights. Like yeah. I mean, it's putting the Monaghan Galway. Um, together in Salt Hill and this is don't think it's going to be a sellout they're expecting 15, 20,000 so that'll be great I want to start this one off by a, a quote from Fitzmaurice that I was reading he was talking about playing a sweeper in front of McManus and they didn't do it um, and it was a lovely quote really from Fitzmaurice it's a quote that I absolutely love he says if we had someone back in front of McManus he might not have scored as much but maybe we might not have scored as much either. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, well, that's, that, that's but that's the payoff. Yeah. So you played each game on its merit. So why the hell would Kerry say, we'll put a sweeper in front of McManus when we've got Clifford, Donaghy yeah. and Ganey? It, yeah. it would make no sense. Yeah. So you always yeah. have to look at that and say, why are we messing our own forwards up by stopping them? Yeah. Like, I mean, and that's true. But then he's talking about Monaghan and Galway. So he says, Monaghan play orthodox when they have the ball, which I thought was very interesting. And Monaghan do. I think Ross Monnelly kind of uh, alluded to that as well. Yeah. When Monaghan turned the ball over, they're using kick passes. They've lads back up the field. They're not dropping everybody back. They can move it fast if they want. They can transition but they all, it through they the front. They have their own power of Megan Nesby and why is he got coming on. They the have, field. and Carl O'Connell and all these. But he says, so it's harder to have somebody back in place to play sweeper. While Galway, most of their team go behind the ball and it makes more sense to have somebody back there. But it can be hard to explain that at times. So obviously what Fitzmaurice is saying there is that they left Crowley back against Galway because Galway had a lot of lads gone out back into the fence so they just said they'd leave one defender. I yeah. don't necessarily think this was really a sweeper as such. It was just one yeah. defender holding his position yeah. which I wouldn't be mm -hmm. overly critical of. But he said against Monaghan it's more difficult to do that because they man up they man up on you a little bit more than Galway now you'd have to say Fitzmaurice would have said this before he saw Galway playing Kildare where Galway would yeah. have kind of played more orthodox than yeah. we've seen them all year but it is interesting against uh, against Monaghan there's no full time sweeper for Monaghan Darren Hughes is playing that role now and he's trying to get back but they leave two on two up mm -hmm. there and they attack with everybody yeah. else and yeah. like yeah. I mean that's why Fitzmaurice is saying it's difficult to free up a man back there to play sweeper because you have to, you have you have all of Monaghan's players to worry about. But, but Darren Hughes isn't even as we talked about Cavan a sprint. No, he's not doing that. Well. No. If there's a goal threat, then he'll yeah. just filter in and sort of watch that. Then yeah. but he's not there the whole time. Monaghan have evolved well, haven't they? Because yeah. like you look Monaghan have some of the best defenders in 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 the country. Yeah, Walsh no, is do. a super player. The, the Wiley brothers are super defenders. They are. You know, and and they really trust those players to go in a one one situation. And but uh, all the talk. The point I'm trying to make is all the talk last year is Monaghan were hammered by Dublin in, se in the quarter final, Tyrone were hammered by them in the semi final, yeah. and all the talk was then that we're going to they're going to have to evolve if they're going to have to try and they're going to have to come out yeah. a bit more. Conor McManus, we quoted on the podcast saying th that very thing. We heard Sean Cavanagh saying it from the Tyrone side, but you'd have to say when you're looking at Monaghan and Tyrone this year, Monaghan have evolved to the point mm. where there's no full time sweeper, yeah. unlike Tyrone. Where to the point where they're committing way more bodies forward, where to the point where they're using the kick pass an awful lot more. Against Kerry, they used it all the time because they could. Yeah. Because they were left. They, so Monaghan wanted. The space yeah. To do that. So, and, and I think against Galway, if Galway look at Monaghan the way they looked at Kildare, this could be a cracking game. of two, This could be like Galway Kildare. There's no reason why it wouldn't be. Will Galway look at them? They'll, they'll probably see Monaghan as being more of a threat than what they would have seen Kildare. And that's no, no disrespect to Kildare. But um, if you if you offer that's that a, Ulster bias coming no, out in you. If you offer a player of Conor McManus's ability, and he's the best player in the country at the minute, I don't care what anybody says, he is the best player in the country. If you offer him the space and time on the ball, the way he was afforded against Kerry, he will run riot. Yeah, in Salt Hill. So but he if would. you don't, like what Fitzmaurice says, Ex then Comer and Walsh might not, and Burke might yeah. run riot. So I what? Do you, that's a payoff. But I, Our, do we back our shooters ahead of their shooters? Monaghan have one, we've three. Do you know what I mean? When well, you look at it that way, I'm I'd be more on the lines. Let's just go out and try and out. Let's beat these. Let's well, yeah. we've three shooters. But, they've but got Galway, one. Well, McCarthy, in fairness, but he was bat poor against Kerry. Yeah, Galway are going to win this game, wanting to win. I don't care. They, they do not want to uh, face Dublin in an All Ireland semi final. They want to go on top of the group and win with a re with a really really good chance of reaching an All Ireland final. They don't want to meet Dublin at, at an earlier stage. So that is the Dublin's the only team this year, believe it. Uh, um, remember that have beat Galway as well yeah. so they will want to keep that winning record going so I'd be surprised if they take the foot off their gas and, and, and play into Monaghan's hands going into this game this weekend yeah so. I don't know I'm, I'm on the fence with this I can see both sides of it I can see um, Galway wanting to win the game for sure 
yeah. but starting their best 15 maybe not like if someone's carrying a niggle are you going to say this is do or die it's not next the following week an all in semi-final is do or die I don't give a shit who we're playing that's the do or die match this is not do or die I'm not risking anybody I'm not playing Colin Parkinson with a high, tight hamstring <laughs> 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 I would disagree I, I, I would want to invite Dublin at all costs you know in a one-off game and in a, in a final I know semi-final is a one-off game as well but more riding on a final um, I would I would rather see Galway go to win the game with their strongest team this weekend and lay down a marker and keep their winning record going because if they were to turn around this weekend and get beat by Monaghan all of a sudden doubts start to creep into the Galway players mind frame and, and that's only a week before a semi-final against Dublin then you don't want those doubts creeping in yeah, if you rest your big players there'll be no doubts that's, your, that's for this game disagree. and then we're no, coming I back I would in. disagree it's hard, it's hard to know but another thing on Galway again Galway are another team that play no full time sweeper no uh, forward comes back to sweep their half back line almost act as three sweepers yeah. in that they never they'll just they like play they, half back they gave Crib and Conway the two Cribbins and Conway the freedom of the bloody park against yeah. Kildare yeah. they're the sweepers they're covering they're in there and the thing about it is then you have Brannigan and you have Heaney dropping back into their on, around their men and suddenly yeah. you have three men the half back line and the three half backs acting as sweepers so suddenly you look and say Juice Galway have gone very defensive they've only really shifted two lines back, two one, lines back, back, yeah. back one that's yeah. kind of the way Galway so then when Galway win it Heaney and Brannigan are trying to get back up straight away the half back line are playing it up towards them and they're giving like you know our bark is breaking mm-hmm. so I think this is the way how to get that defensive uh, structure along with the attacking structure better I think Galway gave an exhibition on the modern game oh, against Kildare absolutely and, and you know there's enough trust within the players and obviously enough communication within the players to understand how they're doing it and how they're playing it and it is a very straightforward system you know you automatically just drop back one line and then you go forward when you have the ball it's very very system or simple way of, of playing playing the game um, and I, w- I would agree with you totally how to play it against Killer was fantastic to watch a great brand of football great defender great defence work but breaking out was ex- exceptionally yeah. good to watch loads and of kick passing loads of great forward play and Galway, Galway have always had quality footballers you know so they, they mixed and, and matched it uh, perfectly well I think in that particular game yeah no exactly so listen lads we'll leave it there and we'll come back with uh, Paddy Power predictions <laughs> Okay, so we'll start with Galway Monaghan then, lads, because this, uh, we've just finished talking about it. So Paddy Power has this priced as of yesterday. I didn't check the odds today, but I presume they haven't moved too much. So Mo- Galway are four to six favourites. Monaghan you'll get at seven to four. Yeah. Two to one outsiders almost. And the handicap here is two. So, like, I mean, for me, who thinks Galway will win it, Monaghan at two to one is really good. Yeah. Nearly two to one is a really good price, considering we don't know what Kevin Walsh is thinking. We don't know yeah, yeah. is he is he thinking about resting lads or, or not? And you think Galway will win this match? I think they'll win it. Yeah, I think Galway will win it at yeah. home. See, yeah, I even think if Kevin Walsh is thinking, let's let's go for it, let's try and win it. Some of the players will be holding back a little bit more naturally. You got a game in six days time, like the biggest game of your life. You're, it's, you're playing it no matter what, so. When you're running up against these Monaghan boys, like you, you don't need that, like you know. So I think you would sort of subconsciously just sort of withdraw a little bit when you don't need it as much as Monaghan need it. So even if they play a, a full team, I think Monaghan will be just they just, they just need it more. Like you know, Galway yeah. might want to finish first, but they don't need to. They don't need to. Yeah, yeah. that that will that yeah, that does make sense. I just think the home advantage will swing yeah. it. I think it's a very close game. Salt yeah. Hill is a isn't a great pitch to play on when you're not used to it the wind is always bad there and Galway are really can be really good there big home home advantage I think we will see like I mean obviously uh, Michael Daly won't start he did his hamstring so it'll give him an extra week yeah. I can still see uh, I can still see Galway they won't rest midfielders because they've run out of them so <laughs> like I mean Cook has to play midfield yeah. and Flynn has to play midfield I could see I could see Comer or Shane Walsh or one of those big big names maybe not playing and Varley or, or Armstrong I think one or two of them could come in and I still think they're good enough even with Armstrong replacing Comer you know with Varley replacing Shane Walsh I still think Galway at home have enough I can trust you can trust Galway nearly now like I mean yeah, they've you, got you can also trust the legs of Armstrong starting in that system yeah. so you can so you know we don't know what Kevin Walsh is thinking we don't know whether he wants to win the game whether he wants to throw the game or lose the game or whatever but what we what we can be sure of 
is that Galway will go in with the same system, the same style that they have been uh, custom to over the last year, a style that's working well for them. And I think that's a hard style to break down. Very few teams have, have Dublin only are the only team who have managed to actually break it down. And <clears throat> I think it's something that works well for Galway. I actually think that it's a game where Monaghan will have to give Conor McManus the freedom of the forward line so that he's not, you know, maybe being uh, up against two or three defenders at any one time. Give him the freedom of the forward line because he has great kicking ability and let him roam. And that, if, if they do that, they have a greater chance of winning the game. But I still think that the way the system is working well for Galway at the minute and how they've been playing well and adapting to that and, and playing with a serious confidence this year, I think that they're going to come out on top. Who are you going for, sorry? Galway. Galway as well, yeah. 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 And another way you could do it, start your very best team for Galway <coughs> and if we happen to be winning by five points, you could take, take them, them off, off and give them the rest that way. Yeah. Then it, like we don't know who's having niggle. Anyone who has a niggle is not going to play. Whereas if, yeah. if it's the other in semi-final, if you have a niggle, you are you're playing. playing. I think playing, that's yeah. what I'm talking about, resting lads rather yeah. than, you know. In fairness, they were, like, if they were training this week, they would have an in-house game on the Sunday. Yeah. You know, this would be their last big training session. Yeah, but mentally, sort of emotionally yeah. and physically, it's not. that's not draining. That's just... Just a, that's a run out now yeah. it, it's not the same the next day after a uh, match in training no matter how bloody like the amount of energy you lose just from your nerves alone like yeah, I mean you're yeah. drained that's a, the next day after a championship match say in Croke Park your body's shut down nearly yeah. just just your whole you're so tense today but like it's the emotion of it the, the morning of it the, the morning of it from, like from you, the up. energy that yeah. you lose just through nerves and through you know you could be sweating on the bus going yeah. like I mean your stomach's in a knot this is the and I would have been of the very lower level scale <laughs> nerves like, you know what I mean yeah. I would be joking on the bus but you still have that ring you, you always hear any sportsman saying or any sports person saying that nerves are always a good thing and I believe nerves are, are, are a good thing and you know with those it does add to it it gets you pumped and psyched up for a yeah. game like this here so it does so but you expend an awful lot of energy yeah Absolutely. that's the point to make yeah. it alright so the other two games alright so Donegal Tyrone let's quickly on this so this is uh, Donegal are slight outsiders so Paddy Power clearly has not yeah. read into the three or four points in Bally Buffet <laughs> they haven't read the Donegal Democrat that I read um, and Brian McAniff um, so Donegal are 11 to 10 uh, the draws evens uh, or no Tyrone are evens and the, the handicap here you get Donegal with a point head start so lads I'm going straight in here and I'm going Donegal with the point head start and then you add that point head start onto the three or four yeah. that, that, that's a lead Tyrone just can't peg back <laughs> What's the, what's the draw price hit me up there I didn't know 16 to 1 no it's not sorry it's 15 to 2 15 to 2 right <coughs> yeah. sure. you know like it is the we're getting into draw season now aren't we yeah. um, it's such a tough game like I was thinking Tyrone I don't think last year's game was any bearing on it I mean Tyrone were miles ahead but different manager different trajectories <sighs> I, I probably just go for a draw just because I can't I, I think Tyrone are a little bit ahead of them like sort of and if they were playing anywhere else <laughs> I'd say the Bally Buffet but I'm just going to go for a draw OK yeah. Stevie um, I, I think Tyrone can certainly go and win the game but Bally Buffet <laughs> Bally Buffet <laughs> is the swaying factor here it absolutely is Bally is. Buffet the hardest place to go in the Do country you know it's, one, it's one of the toughest places it, it's small and compact and you know the, the home support really get behind their team and, and support you always hear about 16 man it really does add serious value to a team particularly going into the lands then this weekend that that is going to be um i wouldn't give it three or four points of an advantage against a, a team as capable as thrown i would give it a one one two point advantage but i just think that that one or two points is going to be the difference yeah. but i think the classier forwards lie in the Donegal camp and that's where it's going to come down to patience, composure and, and forwards kicking long range points and, and Donegal have those players. Okay, right, we have to move Conan now unless you have a sensational point it's, here. It's, well, uh, you've built it up to <laughs> it's like, but Donny, anywhere you are in Donegal it feels like you're sort of cut off from the rest of the world. So I think, honestly, that would feed into the players' mindset. This would be like their crew park because they know the whole county is talking about this game. Everything else outside of Donegal doesn't seem to matter. So when you're playing in Bally Buffet, it does sort of feel like the centre of that little universe. Was that that was alright, wasn't it? Yeah, that was very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a pass on it. Yeah, the centre of the universe. That's yeah, what the yeah. GA is all about. That is, yeah, exactly. Right, Kerry Kildare lads. Kerry are one to twelve now. The obviously the odds are reflecting <coughs> the fact that Kildare and Ross Common have nothing to play for outside of uh, pride in the jersey. And I'm just a little bit wondering whether Kildare, Ross Common say, right, well, we've had a squad here all year. Um, we've played a, si a similar starting team all the time. We a big Super 8 game down in Killarney and the game in Croke Park. 
we're going to give the squad as a thank you for pushing these lads hard all year you're going to represent your county this today lads would there's no hope of that happening is it but it'd be a nice thing to do imagine the squad next year yeah. kind of those lads pushing kind of thinking like it there's nothing riding on it here there's nothing yeah, there's riding, not on, riding it. on it for both teams i would say it'll be probably a mix of both experience and and squad players blended in the both teams that's that's probably the proper way you you don't want to phase out all of the experienced players and and go in with uh, you know a second string team uh, totally but I would say some fringe players will certainly get run outs for both teams yeah you'd imagine Daniel Flynn's obviously suspended um, so Carrier 1 to 12 <coughs> and Kildare 15 to 2 the handicap here is 8 so what do you think here lads I think Carrier will get the handicap yeah I think they'll beat yeah, them by th- 9 or more yeah I think you know even though they weren't anywhere near their best against Monaghan the the uplift that getting the draw when they probably shouldn't have got a draw will, will give them a serious uh, boost in confidence the young players that I was really impressed with David Clifford was superb in that game O'Shea his, some of his free taking was top notch um, you know O'Sullivan from corner back driving the team forward was the younger players really stepped up to the to a mantra that day and they were brilliant exceptionally good but also then it was the the finesse of Kieran Donahue's flick and, and touch down to uh, Clifford that got them back into the game as well and I just think that that'll bring them on something serious and they will have more than enough to, to outscore Kildare by, by quite a bit Right okay Conan Killarney obviously a terribly difficult place to get anything out of like I mean it's a beautiful setting beautiful we're, pitch We're four or five points for Kerry so yeah. um, No I, I'm just going to go with Kerry I think Kildare have been going really well like we all know that and they've been unlucky to fall at the wrong side of narrow defeats against yeah. Galway and Monaghan so I don't think they're just sort of write off like the odds would suggest the only thing you see the odds, odds are reflecting the fact they've nothing to play for like I mean if, if if this was a game Kildare could stay in I would the handicap wouldn't be 8 I don't think yeah. it would deserve to be 8 I think Kildare should have more respect than that the fact that they're out the fact that Feely might not play because yeah. he's been carrying that calf in mm. like any lads carrying those injuries now instead yeah. of flogging them like in fairness and they it's were not, it's not being disrespectful to Kildare by saying that Kerry will beat them by that much Kildare have been exceptionally good in yeah. the Super Eights. This is not a regular posting. game. It's just, not a regular yeah, yeah, game. It's, it's a game they've nothing to play yeah. in and they might not play their full team because the lads that have been carrying the knocks will surely yeah. be given that t- game and off. Kerry need to win by what more Kerry than three desperately to have to win, yeah. 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 But I'm still going to go with Kerry just inside the, the handicap. Right, okay. Yeah, I'll go for Kerry. To be honest with you, I don't know whether what to do with that handicap. I might go I might go with Stevie and say that Kerry could beat them by like I mean you just need three goals to cover that. Like I mean it could be if you said this score there would be yeah. three fourteen to fourteen points, would you be surprised? Yeah. Or three fourteen thirty you wouldn't. Um, they're, not scoring, they're not creating a lot of goal chances Kerry yeah but I think Kildare will, will probably be that bit bit more open but I do take your point they didn't score them against but how uh, good was Clifford's goal by the way against Monaghan yeah. 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 ah Stevie listen wait a minute mate you've missed a boat in this no, we've no, talked about I, this I, I, know, I know that but <laughs> how good was it, like it ah, was yeah. absolutely ruthless at, at, at the highest level though. at the highest level and it's three points for outstanding oh, like I mean the, the man, point before a goal yeah, the was long one of the best points yeah. that you'll get because at Given the circumstances where they are four points down at that stage, for a player to have the calmness as young as him to actually just strike the yeah. ball over with such finesse was brilliant. But that's what we were saying on the Monday. Like, I mean, this is a fellow who's just out of minor. Yeah. Like, I mean, think of how young you are. I didn't play just out of minor. You didn't play just out no. of minor. Like, think of how young this fellow is. Exactly. And he's kicking a ball that important and he's he's not going to that far over the bar he might have kicked that yeah. bloody 65 yeah. but it was the canvas uh, he wasn't trying to force it no he just soon. stroke he just it over but like I mean Clifford has everything yeah. he's brains he's got freakish ability off both sides he's got height think of what we can look forward from this lad when he's 19 out of minor and he's doing this yeah. he's the talk of the Kerry team this is the, the traditionally most brilliant team in the country he is out of minor and he's leading this team already. It's yeah. just like it's mind boggling to think how good this lad will he'll be like he'll be at senior level in five years what he was like minor. He'll be just throwing lads away from him. <laughs> he'll be scoring three eight. I'm telling you, he's well, a, I'm he's not a freak. gonna rule out your predictions. You you mentioned Galway going to win the All Ireland and they're very, very close. <laughs> yeah, they want to do it before Clifford gets uh, comes of age. Right, Dublin Ross Common lads, Dublin are one to fifty. This is like a Leinster match. Ross Common are eleven to one and the handicap is twelve. Dublin are beating that handicap. Dublin won't play their best team. I say that's a guarantee. Yeah. But Dublin's second team, we all know. Paul Flynn will get a start. Kevin McManaman will get a start. Ono Garrick will get a start. You'd imagine they'll still, still annihilate yeah. Roscommon, unfortunately, because yeah. all those three players I've just mentioned are all match winners. <laughs> and they're, and what they are is big, freakishly strong fellas. Yeah. And Roscommon aren't the biggest team in the world. No matter what way Roscommon look at this, they're going to ship a beating off Dublin here yeah. um, in this one. 
Yeah, absolutely. You can't see anything else, and you know you'd expect that um, Roscommon will try some of their fringe players out as well. So add add Roscommon's fringe players to Dublin's fringe players, and you have two different category of players. Yeah, exactly. Cannon double minus twelve. Yeah, double minus twelve for me. Right. Listen, we're all in agreement. We'll come back with Joe from Paddy Power. Yeah. 